Assalamu alaikum. Howdy everybody. Some of you might know me uh, as the Muslim cowboy and I wanted to tell a little bit about my story. For those of you who haven't seen me before, and this might be your first time seeing me, you might be asking, what is a cowboy doing as a Muslim? Moreover, what's a white guy, a white southerner doing as a Muslim? Well, first of all, to kind of break this misconception is that Islam is not a brown religion. It's not for brown people. It's not for Arabs or Easterners. It's not foreign. But actually, God in the final revelation, the final testament sent to mankind said, and we did not send you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy to all of creation. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not sent to the Arabs. He was sent to all of mankind. He was born amongst Arabs and he spoke Arabic, but his message was to be something that permeated the world and brought all of mankind out of the darkness, paganism, of false worship and disbelief and atheism into the light of worshiping one God alone. So why did I become a Muslim? Well, growing up, I was born in the deep south from Texas, as some of you might know, and I was very involved in a religious family. Religious family in Christianity means you go to church once a week. Not practicing like you would call practicing in Islam, but for us that's practicing. And we did have a good social sphere amongst other practicing Christians. So there was a sense of community. Now growing up, I was very devoted to my religion. I was very active and very involved. But it wasn't until some time later when I recognized that there was some pretty glaring issues with the book that my whole faith was based upon that I started questioning things. And every time I questioned, just like many of the other people you see out there who have converted to Islam from Christianity, the questions were not adequately answered. And it wasn't that the people who I was asking were not adequate enough to answer them. These were highly trained theologians, priests, pastors, people who had spent 20, 30, 40 years giving their life to the cloth, as you call it. So why were the answers inadequate? because they don't sit right with what's called the human fitra, the innate disposition of mankind, right? Whenever you ask somebody why something is a contradiction and they just tell you, just have faith, just believe. How do you explain the Trinity? Well, it's a mystery. At the end of the day, things that don't make sense, they're not from God. One thing I learned early on is that yes, I might not be able to understand the extent of God's power, His mercy. I can't fathom Him fully, but I understand those qualities. Whenever it comes to something that's a quality of God, that is not understandable, but rather is confusing, then we know that's not from God because is God the author of confusion? I don't think so. And so whenever I started coming across a lot of these irreconcilable contradictions in the Bible, I knew that it wasn't the truth, but I didn't know where to look. So I started trying to find other congregations, other denominations in Christianity that were the truth. And so when I did that, it wasn't until about 2010 when I recognized that the ancient Unitarians, the followers of Arius, some of the Nestorians and the Ebionites, all those some of them did have beliefs that I wouldn't agree with as a Muslim. They were the closest ones to the truth. Those who did not take Jesus as a divine being, but rather as a prophet and a messenger, someone who had a divine purpose and he came with the will of God and they were one in their mission, just like the prophet Muhammad was one in his mission with God, but they're not of the same substance because God is not a substance. Rather, God has created all substances, everything that is in the existence that we see in the universe, all of these things all are created they're all contingent and they all require a necessary existence and so Jesus Muhammad Moses the Holy Spirit are all created things and I recognize that and so I knew there was only one God but I didn't know what to do with it and so I used to go to church and it was actually pretty funny whenever everyone would put their hands up and say in Jesus name we pray I mean I would say and I would say in Allah's name I mean because I knew the Aramaic that Jesus said the word Allah which is almost identical it's a cognate of the Arabic word Allah And so I went on like this for some time until one day I had enough and I knew that I had to change something in my life. And so I opened up my Bible like I was used to doing. And I went to Matthew and I recognized right there where Jesus was asking for this cup to be taken away from him when he was begging not to be going to the cross. What did he do? He fell on his face. He prostrated. And I remembered something my pastor said a couple weeks before, which at the time it was odd, but I didn't really think about it until this moment. And he had made a sermon about how we shouldn't be like them Muslims and putting our 
our heads on the ground. He said, we're Christians. We put our knees on the ground and we ask like this. And when I read this verse, I'd read it before, but for the first time it hit me. I remember the pastor said, don't humiliate yourself and put your head on the ground. And I thought, Jesus, the one we follow, I don't worship him because I was no longer Trinitarian, but I said, Jesus, he's putting his head on the ground. Why are you saying that he humiliated himself? Don't we want to follow him? I came to a crossroads here. I knew I had a choice to make. Am I going to follow the pastor or am I going to follow Jesus? It's the same thing with Paul. You either follow Paul or you either follow Jesus. Jesus called to worshiping the Father, the one God. Paul called to worshiping Jesus, to change in the law. And so I knew at this moment that I was going to follow Jesus. So I put my head on the ground and I had a dream. I had a vision and God had wrote in my heart, clearer than anything, more certain than my own name, that there was only one God and he was not Jesus. He was infinite and I was commanded for the rest of my life to follow this man named Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Now after this dream was over, I got up and I said to myself as a person who doesn't just follow things just by feelings. And I said, if this is true, it will have evidence to back it up. And so, so I went to my bookshelf that I had and I had a Quran sitting up on there collecting some dust. I'd read a lot of other religious books, but the Quran was just sitting there waiting for this moment. So I went to go open it. And the moment I opened this book, that first page I read, I couldn't stop crying. It hit me like a massive waterfall. I was completely inundated with this certainty this knowledge that of a surety God was real and this was his way. Reading every page I would turn to just further confirmed it and this feeling has not left me since. The Quran is so simple. The message of God that he sent since Adam to Noah, to Abraham, to Moses, to Jesus, to Muhammad, peace be upon them all, has all been the same message. Worship God alone. Don't worship any idols, any statues, any people, including Jesus, including Muhammad, including the Holy Spirit. Worship God God alone, the Creator, and obey the messengers that He has sent. That is the truth, and that is the way. And I read it, and tears flowed. I cried for almost two weeks. I would just be in the middle of a store, and tears would come down because of the gratitude that God Almighty put into my heart, making me realize that I had finally come home, that I had found the truth. And so it was a week later when I finally found out how to say my testimony of faith and ended up finding the nearest mosque, which was about an hour and 15 minutes away, that I did give that testimony of faith. And for any of you that are out there who agree that, man, the Trinity ain't right. It don't make no sense. I don't want to do mental gymnastics anymore. I'm tired of all the, the facades and everyone putting up this fakery and, you know, the, the pastor cheating on his wife and all this kind of stuff. People doing it just for money. If you're ready for something real, then you're ready for that testimony of faith too. If you believe there's only one God and this God is ever living, he never dies. He doesn't eat. He doesn't sleep. He is free of any kind of need. He's only one. He doesn't have sisters or roommates or uncles. And you believe in the prophets, every single one of them, and that you recognize from what I've taught and what other people have teaching you, that Muhammad of a surety is a prophet of God, just like Jesus and Moses and the rest of them, peace be upon them all, then you have it in your heart already and you're ready to become a Muslim. The only thing left is to testify on your tongue to that. And if you're ready to do that, you can send me an email in the description below or send me a message through Instagram. And if you have more questions and you want to know more about the final prophet Muhammad and understand why he truly is a prophet from God and he's not a liar. Go visit some of the other videos that I've done. Go check out The Forbidden Prophecies by Abu Zakaria or Proofs of Prophethood by Muhammad as shanawi There's a lot of good resources out there and the best resource is learning about the prophet's life, learning about his biography and going and getting a free copy of the Quran. You can get one at www.get-quran.com and anyone who wants to support this noble cause, there's a link there where you can help them out as well. At the end of the day, if you're sincere and you love God, then you'll obey and you'll do what he wants you to do. You won't do what you want to do. And so now, after Allah has guided me, I'm going to use this message to hopefully try and guide all of the other people like me who have good, strong family values, who truly love God, but they're tired of being lied to by the mainstream media, by other people. Islam is the only solution for what we're seeing in the world today. And it's the only way to paradise. And I invite you to it. All right, everybody. I really appreciate y'all sticking around. If you like this content, make sure you lasso that like down below and saddle up on that subscribe. And I pray that God Almighty gives all of you a good Ramadan. Right now is the best time more than ever to make Toba, to repent to God, turn back to Him, and make sure your life is living for Him and Him alone. If anyone's got any questions like I mentioned before, shoot me something to my Instagram or to my email, and I'll be sure to get back to you. And as always, guys, y'all take care now. Assalamu alaikum.